Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Just Real Talks where we help African diasporas repatriate to Ghana with ease. In today's episode, we're gonna talk about some misconceptions that people have concerning Ghana. All right, and so we're gonna go through a couple of them and just kind of tell uh, from our experience what we've heard and uh, what we've encountered. And if you have any uh, comments or some things that maybe you have heard concerning Ghana, you can leave them down in the comment section below. Right, and so uh, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing and clicking the notification bell so that you can be notified when new videos are posted. And all right, let's just go ahead and get into it. Our first misconception right. about Ghana. <laughs> well, about Ghana. <laughs> our first misconception that we hear a lot about Ghana is that there is a lot of crime here in Ghana. So let's just, have we experienced a lot of crime since we've been here? No. So we haven't experienced any crime at all. No. Um, our, my experience, I can just, you know, speak from my experience, right? My experience um, has been pretty just laid back and chill. It's been really laid back and chill, pretty peaceful. Even like now, we're sitting here, we're talking. It's pretty peaceful. This is what you get. Um, if you go into the city, it's just like any other city. There's the hustle and bustle, the movement, um, you know, of just city life. Um, but other than that, that's what you're going to get. Um, the most you might see is an argument, maybe somebody having a disagreement with someone else, but it's never to the point of violence. Like, I have not seen that, and so, mm -hmm. yeah, my answer would be no. Mm -mm. Ghana is actually <laughs> ranked one of the most peaceful countries in the world. Right. And um, per my experience, no, I have not seen or experienced a lot of crime here. Um, I have seen a few car accidents. But things that people are mostly talking about as far as petty theft or violent crime, mm -mm. I have not personally experienced that since being here. No. Moses, maybe you can give some insight. <laughs> okay, so basically when I hear people say like, you know, Ghana or Africa, there are a lot of crimes in Ghana, there's a lot of crime in Africa. Uh, these people tend to forget that there are bad people everywhere in the world. You know, there are a lot of crimes, activities, you know, everywhere in the world, from wherever you're coming from. And so, you know, Ghana or Africa is better exception, of course. But then the rate at which these things happen is what is very, very important, of course. Um, there's, there are, I wouldn't say there are no crimes in Ghana. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are some crimes in Ghana, you know, but to what extent do these things happen? Mm -hmm. For instance, wherever you are around the world, if you mess around go out at the wrong time of course you know you should be expecting to meet one or two you know problems you know you are not supposed to go at certain places you know go out at certain times you know for, for your own safety and other stuff some of these things if you do them anywhere around the world you know you might find yourself you know encountering one problem with the other but ghana is a peaceful country and just as i said if you are here and you're not looking for trouble from anyone you know, not going to, you know, cause harm or troubles to people. You are going to live here peacefully. In all the years you are going to be here, you know, you're going to be at peace with everyone and you're going to enjoy your stay here. All right. And so that's misconception number one. <laughs> so let's go into the second misconception that we hear a lot about Ghana. Mm -hmm. So the second misconception is that cost of living in Ghana is cheap. Mm. So that's one that I personally heard a lot, like, oh, I'm going to Ghana because I can go there and I can get an apartment for X amount of money and I'll mm -hmm. be able to live here super cheaply. Mm -hmm. So what are our thoughts on that? Uh, for me, I feel like, you no, know, it just depends on where you want to stay. Um, it just depends on where you want to stay. Like, if you want to stay uh, somewhere that's um, a little far, further out from the city, then maybe you'll be able to find something a little cheaper or maybe what's your definition of cheap like you know what i mean so i don't i don't know that how to answer that one right so it just depends on you it depends on your budget it depends on what you're looking for how you determine that you want to live um and then your idea of that will set the tone for where you want to stay and so that's what i would say so yeah you can live here for what someone would deem as being cheap but it depends on what you define as cheap. Right, that's true. Um, basically, when people say the cost of living in Ghana, 
is cheap or high it depends on from which angle are they looking at it mm -hmm. so first of all someone coming from you know outside ghana let's say from the states or from canada or from the uk will probably have a money that has a higher value in, in response to the city mm -hmm. so for instance if you are dealing in dollars and then you come to ghana to you know either get an apartment or get something mm -hmm. oh this you know might cost high or this amount in the state or maybe in canada mm -hmm. but then it's way cheaper here you know but we, we shouldn't forget the fact that you know um, society is evolving africa or ghana is developing most of the stuff that we use in developing you know our nations are stuff that are imported mm -hmm. you know from outside countries right. of course importation comes with a lot of cost you know mm -hmm. shipping costs duty costs and you know, all that customs a whole lot so by the time we are done putting stuff in place you know things are going to be you know a bit um higher as compared to what we used to do before right. so um yes there are certain areas it, it depends on what you're looking at if you're looking at apartment of course um, Ghana can give you like some of the luxury and best places to live, oh, but guess guys. what? <laughs> guess what? <laughs> Those luxury comes with a price. It comes with, it comes you know, with if a you price. want to live in the nice neighborhood mm -hmm. with a third road mm -hmm. and other stuff, it comes mm -hmm. at a cost. Mm -hmm. You know, so you shouldn't expect that oh, because it's in Africa, yeah, it's going to be cheap. Ghana is going to be cheap. Mm -hmm. No, the, the materials used in, in making this place and luxury mm -hmm. are cost, you know, costly materials, mm -hmm. and most of them are imported. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure, you know, anybody would like to like yeah. invest in something and then, you know, after incurring all those courses, we want to make it cheap. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, there are still other options. You, you know, one good thing is you still have options as to where you want to live, as right. to how you want to live, mm -hmm. as to the standard you want to live. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah. And a good are, standard, like it's not like you know, like you going to like the bottom or something like that. Like right, you can right. live really nice. Yeah. Um, in some places with at a, a, a really affordable um, cost mm -hmm. yeah, and so true. you know it, it's not like one or the other either it's super no. high and you live in luxury or it's super low and you just like you're <laughs> no. struggling no mm -hmm. that there's like you know places in between where you can get a really nice mm -hmm. affordable house mm -hmm. and really live comfortably yeah. right and and don't have to break your bank to do it that's true and most of these places that you're going to live are very spacious mm -hmm. you know they are not compacted as Listen, it is in the, in the you know, other say, places. Very spacious. Because we like, just love this <laughs> space. I don't know, like, it's really big. It's like these rooms be huge. The rooms are huge. <laughs> the apartments and are huge. Honestly, the it's for, huge. And like, uh, most of the rooms come en suite, right? They have their own restroom for each room. So exactly. it's some things like that I can appreciate. Yeah, I can yeah appreciate. but with all that, you know, when it comes to that is accommodation. Mm -hmm. There are other factors like clothing, food. Right. Of course, you might get them cheaper. You right. know, because mm -hmm. food in Africa is the mother motherland that kind mm -hmm. of produces almost everything. Mm -hmm. So food in Africa is not as expensive right. as it might be from wherever you're coming from. Mm -hmm. So yes, on that yeah. aspect, it's but cheap. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe most of transportation, mm -hmm. you know, can be relatively cheaper as compared to where you're coming from. Right, but know? when it comes to food, it, yeah. um, it definitely depends on the lifestyle that you want to live. Mm -hmm. Now, if you are wanting to live in a very nice estate and if you're wanting to get food from a nice restaurant that has like um maybe cuisine from different countries mm -hmm. and if you wanting to when you get transportation if you don't have your own car if you always want to get an uber if you always want to get a boat then the cost of living is going to be higher for you because the money's always right going because yeah. of the lifestyle that you're living yeah. but if you're living a different lifestyle if you're willing to get on trochos if you want to um go to local restaurants then the cost of living is going to be lower for you mm -hmm. so um especially where you're living too if you're living in accra the cost of living is going to be higher for you if you're living in volta region or northern region mm -hmm. the cost of living in ghana is going to be lower for you mm -hmm. so ghana can give you whatever kind of lifestyle that you want mm -hmm. so depending on the lifestyle you're living will depend on the cost of living right yeah it depends on the lifestyle you want to live <laughs> If you choose to live like <laughs> luxury and good, of course, yeah. you know, yeah, there is more. always, you know, um, something for you. If you want to live luxury, there is something for you. Right. If you want to live like a middle but class that's person. Like, uh, for me, guys, I don't know. For me, mm, I feel know, like that's the like beauty. Day. Yeah, like there's a blend in everything, yeah. you know. So, yeah, you're not limited. You yeah, know. Ghana is one of those places that we can talk to you till we're blue in the face about mm -hmm. how beautiful and 
you know, peaceful it is here. But until you touch down, you know, you can't really get the full experience of it. And then, you you know, when you get here, you're going to be like, guys, you know, you are so right. Oh, my goodness. It's just a nice vibe. It's a nice feeling. The people are nice. And I don't know. I don't know what else to say. Like, why aren't you here? <laughs> that's so funny. You kind of touched on something that a lot of people ask. I feel like the number one question people ask is, oh, how much should I save before mm. coming to Ghana? And I feel like that's such a hard question to answer because mm -hmm. it depends on what kind of lifestyle that you want to live. Mm -hmm. So I can't tell you a specific number because I don't know what you're, you're wanting to do. Right. So if you're somebody who like you need luxury type things, right? Right? You want you you know you, you yeah you need luxury type things. I'm just gonna leave it like that. <laughs> Whatever those things are, you know, then your cost would be a lot higher than right. someone you know. Or if you have not even if you want luxury type things, like if you have a large family. Right, you mm -hmm. have a family of six, or you know, there's seven of you guys. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so mm -hmm. there's a lot more people to feed. There's a lot more room that you need. So mm -hmm. that might come at a, a higher cost, also. Yeah. So um, one of the things I want to chip in is um, something that you you might not want to do once you get here to Ghana or maybe any of the African countries. Let me make it general. Is that, for instance, if you are coming from the states and you are you are using spending dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you get to Ghana, don't still see your money as in dollars. Mm -hmm. What do I mean? Like, don't spend it as if you are spending it in dollars in the state. Why, why am I saying this? Um, the city to the dollar is relatively, the dollar is higher than the city. And so if you get here, if you still see your money as if it is still in dollars, even though it's still in dollars, but you're spending you know, you should consider being in cities. For instance, you go out there and then you ask for, for a price of something, mm -hmm. you know, maybe to braid your hair or maybe, you know, to buy something and they tell you um, it's, let's say, like 100 cities. 100 cities, if you convert it to your currency, to the, to the dollar, it might be, oh, this is yeah. very small. Mm -hmm. But then maybe that 100 cities or that 500 cities might be, you know, something huge in cities, mm -hmm. you know. So if you want to compare it to what you used to buy from the state or wherever you're coming from, you must, oh, it's cheaper. But at the end of the day, you realize that no, you, you could have still have a chance to negotiate and bring it down instead of seeing it in dollars or mm -hmm. like how you and used to buy it. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you do that, you know, it will go a long way to help you save a lot and not, you know, just gas up money, you know, mm -hmm. um, you, you may not lose a lot of money if you mm -hmm. do it. Yeah. All right. So it depends on what kind of lifestyle you want to live mm -hmm. when it comes to cost of living in Ghana. Right. So the next misconception mm -hmm. on the list is that you will get scammed in Ghana. Mm. Popular misconception. Mm. What are our thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think um, getting scammed, like I said earlier, like I established, it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's everywhere. It's true. There are bad people everywhere, mm -hmm. even where you're going to come from. You know, but at the end of the day, you shouldn't come to Africa thinking that oh um it's it's it, it's, it's the coolest place people are saying it's you know it's freedom and you know mm -hmm. it's yes people are cool and so you're not going to have your guard on mm -hmm. you know you should have your guard on you know you should wear your, your smart thinking cap you know in every dealing that you do mm -hmm. when someone is saying something to you i know you are you are here you are excited seeing your brother but then there, there are bad people everywhere mm -hmm. so read between what the person is telling you you know just put your thinking cap on and you just be reading between the lines you know with this thing he's saying is it really real or, you know mm -hmm. and you'll be able to tell you know from what the person is saying and then know whether the person is being real or not mm -hmm. you know so getting scammed it's everywhere in, in terms of purchasing of property purchasing of anything what our advice is do your due diligence mm -hmm. very well you know mm -hmm. if you don't know keep asking people keep mm -hmm. asking questions you can go online you know the good thing for you to do is basically go on some of these um the, the nation's website mm -hmm. you know if it is about um passports and paperwork and other stuff you can go to the ghana immigration service website mm -hmm. you know you find a lot of valuable information over there uh, if it is about you know land or something you can go to the lands commission you know their website they have spelled out every single thing that you need to know so what i'm basically saying is don't just you know um 
come in and start doing things without not researching or kind of finding out more about stuff you know just do that and you're going to be on the safer side mm -hmm. so yes it is not like oh you're going to get scammed every minute you know as you go on mm -hmm. just as they are bad people look they are extremely good people and yes. the good news is the, the good people are more, more than mm -hmm. the bad people That's true. so you might meet like a thousand good people and meet like one bad mm -hmm. you know bad person and so, one another thing i wanted to add moses is that um we shouldn't really um put that on to other um one bad experience like put that on everything like if you have a if someone has a bad experience doesn't mean that everyone that comes to ghana will have that same experience right and so for me i feel like the most important thing is to make sure that the most high is leading you in everything that you do and it's so important to be spirit-led when you're making a big move right to go to a whole nother continent and decide to re like settle in there and set yourself up there to stay takes like you need the most high with you in order to make that move right and so um and you need to be spirit led right and and ask the most high pray for discernment right and situations so that you can like the most high can reveal to you when things aren't right when things don't feel right and don't be uh quick to dismiss like if you're feeling like something's not right don't pick don't be quick to dismiss it kind of you know take it for them before the most high in prayer and so um what I would advise anybody um, is like before you make a big move like that, make sure that you're settled in your spirit that that's what the Most High would want you to do. And so when you settle in your spirit that that's what the Most High would want you to do, He will cause you to move to another continent. Then you can rely on the Most High knowing that He's going to set everyone in place, right? That's going to help you on your journey, right? And so that would be my my contribution to make sure that you're spirit led, that you uh, pre uh, present. You know that the most high has told you to go and that um yeah you lean and trust on him trust in him that he's going to lead you to the right people uh that's going to have your back and have your best interests at heart mm. well that's good i agree with everything that was said i don't really have anything to add to that so when it comes to getting scammed in ghana just make sure you have your common sense Mm -hmm. Don't leave your common sense at the door when you get off the plane. Right. Um, also, seek um, the Most High in all of your decisions. Mm -hmm. Be spirit-led mm -hmm. and have wisdom and discernment when you're out here, when you're moving, and when you're investing and right. doing all that you're doing here. Right. Just have wisdom, discernment, also mm -hmm. common sense. And, and don't be so quick to cut corners. Oh, don't be, yeah. not, I'm just saying, right? Don't be, because I've, I've, yeah. I've met some people who yeah. are like, oh, I heard you can do it this Like, don't yeah. be so quick to cut corners. Because when you cut corners, that's when you enter into a space where, you know, you're more high at risk of getting scammed, right? So try your best to do, do things the right way. And when you're doing things the right way and interacting with the right people that you need to interact with mm -hmm. to get things done right, when it's done right, you don't have to worry. Right, but when you cut corners and try to do something roundabout, you know, in a roundabout way, mm -hmm. that's when you run into problems and you run into issues, and you have to try to figure out how to fix something. Right? I think that's a very yeah. good point because yeah. um, some people get here and they, they think they want to outsmart the people or outsmart the system, mm -hmm. and then they'll meet people who also like you know feed the oppressed. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, um, how can I get a driver's license, or maybe how can I get a resident permit? Mm -hmm. And someone will be like, oh. If you want to get it like in two days, mm -hmm. you know, pay X, Y, Z amount of money. Right. And then, you know, I will do it for you. Mm -hmm. Be careful, you know, mm -hmm. take the right systems. Mm -hmm. If you want to get the right things done, go through the right channels. The right channels yeah. And you're going to feel at ease. Right. You're going to be very comfortable. You're not going to have any problems. Mm -hmm. But then if you are that type, you push that posture, definitely you're going to get people who will be like, ooh, yeah, yeah, I can help you get this in no time, you know. <laughs> Okay, so misconception number four is that land is either not affordable or not available to foreigners here in Ghana. So what are our thoughts on that? It's affordable and it's available. <laughs> <laughs> Moses, it's so yeah, yeah it's um, true. Africa itself can, it has more than enough land to kind of, you know, um, if not me exaggerating to kind of even accommodate a whole lot of people from from the west or from the world you know and ghana is not an exception ghana is a country that has a whole lot of land available mm -hmm. you know um for people both whether you are from here or you are a foreigner and these lands are affordable 
I don't know why people you know feel like lands in Ghana are not affordable because if you are doing the comparison between the prices of land mm. here in Ghana and the price of land maybe from where you're coming from mm. you know if it's a Western country Europe or you know it might be more expensive out there than here mm. you know and plus it depends on where you want to stay mm -hmm. if you're interested in purchasing land in, in the, the city. hot city yeah. like mm -hmm. in the hot places yeah. of course it's not going to come cheap right. you know it's going to be higher mm -hmm. you know but if you're looking to buy lands you know from the outskirts mm -hmm. you know not from the main cities but you know from other small towns and other stuff mm -hmm. trust me a little amount of money you're going to put out there can get you a lot of acres right mm -hmm. a lot of acres right and the good thing about lands from outskirts is that these lands still have their topsoil Mm. on them which will help you grow your own food right you know with no chemicals no fertilizer nothing you know right. grow your own food feed yourself naturally right mm -hmm. you know and that's so, beautiful very very beautiful yes. so land there is enough land mm -hmm. in ghana to accommodate you from wherever you're coming from and a whole lot of other people yeah and <laughs> the prices are something that you can actually purchase mm -hmm. you know the good thing i tell people that are coming in even mm -hmm. at this time that look if you are a family family oriented person mm -hmm. if you have a big family mm -hmm. and if you get a chance to come here earlier and if you have access to purchasing land mm -hmm. don't just purchase land for yourself mm -hmm. think generational That's right. you know mm -hmm. think generational because mm -hmm. now the prices might be very you know low no. mm -hmm. so it'll be good for you to think of your generation think right. of you know your children think right. of your children's mm -hmm. children mm -hmm. if you have the means i'm not saying if you don't right. have the means don't go mm -hmm. and squeeze yourself if right. you don't have the means the little that you can get for yourself that's fine maybe all your children are grown and you know mm -hmm. they'll have their own money and businesses mm -hmm. so that's okay but if your children are not grown and mm -hmm. they don't have yeah, their business they are little and stuff mm -hmm. Please, you might want to consider purchasing land in a large quantity so right. that someday it might still accommodate you know, right. all these people. Mm -hmm. And so I know most of you out there have a lot of questions when it comes to land. Mm -hmm. What we will do is, you know, go ahead and put it in the comment section for us. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll be willing to, you know, address not all, the ones that we can address, yeah. you know, and the ones mm -hmm. that we know. Mm -hmm. But trust me, it's going to be a very valuable information mm -hmm. for you to, cl to clarify your doubts and, you mm -hmm. know, all the kind of misconceptions you have about you know, mm -hmm. lands in Ghana. Right. So that's basically it. So our next live, that's going to be next Friday, is mm -hmm. actually going to be about misconceptions about buying land mm -hmm. here in Ghana. Yeah. So whatever questions that you have that you yes. want answered, go ahead and leave them in the, leave comments, them in the comments. And we'll be yes. sure to address them next Friday. That's right. right. Mm -hmm. That's right. We'll do it. Mm -hmm. All right. But like what y'all was talking about, I don't want to get too much into it because we're doing the live next Friday. Mm -hmm. but, but it's okay. Um, what you were talking about Moses as far as generational mm -hmm. I know a lot of people will be like oh well you can't own land in Ghana so how can it be gen how can I leave it for my children and my right. children's children mm -hmm. right. oh it so tell me is that possible or is it not possible it is people very possible it. people are doing it yeah. there are lots of people here that are doing it but I'm not going to give you all the ice yeah. and the kicks today you put to it in the it. comment section or probably <laughs> join our live you know next Friday because oh. We will sit down, we will be willing to take you through, yeah. you know, step by step yeah. way of how to do it. Mm -hmm. So that you can clarify all those doubts. Because I know a lot of people doing videos online. Mm -hmm. Oh, you can have land in Ghana as a foreigner. Oh, oh you get scammed. Mm -hmm. Oh, you, you know, it's a whole lot. I'm not saying what they are saying out there is not true. Right. Some might be true, but mm -hmm. it might not be always true. Right. Some may not even have known how to go about it. Right. You know, that is why they got themselves into right. that situation. Mm -hmm. But it will be very beneficial for you to have the mm -hmm. first-hand information even yeah. before taking a step. And mm -hmm. we, we are willing to bring you that information. So don't yeah. hesitate to put it in important. the comment section. It's important Any question to you yeah. have, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's important to connect with people who know how to get it done for you. Right. right? And so... Um, just join join us ask the questions that you need to ask and allow us the opportunity to answer those questions for you mm -hmm. and so that you can get the information that you need to make sound decisions not only for yourself but for your children right, right. because you when you buy land you don't you might not know what you want to do with it right but your children are young and when they get older they might have a dream of building a, a house for themselves mm -hmm. they might have a dream of uh, living sustainable uh, self-sustainable right on their own property and they have that option because you took the opportunity to purchase land on their behalf 
right and so that's how you're able to pass things on to your children you know and and so on and so forth right mm -hmm. and yes it can go on generationally yes it can do it right <laughs> and so we'll talk more about that in our next uh live right right next live. yes in our next live mm -hmm. guys so is there anything else anybody <laughs> yeah just to put it out there just a tip mm -hmm. of it just a tip of it mm -hmm. when it comes to land in ghana mm -hmm. Everyone is entitled to leaves. Mm -hmm. Okay, so mm -hmm. it's full leasing, whether me being a Ghanaian mm -hmm. or you being a diaspora. Mm -hmm. Just that the years, mm -hmm. the number of years of leasing mm -hmm. is what we differ. Right. But if I'm a Ghanaian, mm -hmm. I can purchase land, and guess what? On my document, it's going to be a lease, a lease, mm -hmm. a lease agreement. Right. So just, 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 just an antidote, you know. Just, just to give you a little bit to think <laughs> about. Way. Just a little bit. We'll, we'll dive into that, and you know, show you how, and you know, tell you all about it. Especially for that, you know, those questions you're going to bring forth, mm -hmm. we, will, we will do our best to answer it or and clarify, you know, mm -hmm. those for you so that you'll be at ease. All right. Yeah. If so if that's all guys we did our very best to be helpful and provide helpful information that's what we're here for and so if you have questions please don't hesitate to leave them down in the comment section below and uh, join us next week when we go live right and so that you can have those questions answered all right and so if you haven't already subscribed to the channel please consider subscribing and clicking the notification bell so that you can be notified when new videos are posted and as always guys we love you and we will see you next time <laughs>